Yo, this is a ton of plays. Pokemon Violet. And here we have it. Research station number three. So we already met another one of those Terra Pokemon, or like, uh, I won't call it Terra Pokemon, more like weird Pokemon, this robot Pokemon, in a Delibird. Dual type ice and water. And now, we're wondering, will there be more? The answer is probably very big of a yes, but what will we face them? Here's research station number three. Let's go to it. All right, another research station. Then as we go, nice. We get to chill for a minute. Something that jump us up again, one hundred percent guaranteed. Ah, oh Penny, such a worry what? Huh? And there it is! Iron Treads is back! See? See? Wait a second! This is just like that Titan Pokemon we saw! So it was a future Pokemon all along! Wow, you battled one of those before? Arvin? He looks seriously strong! Yeah, well... Satan and I are old pros when it comes to Titans. Leave this to us! So we're gonna face against Iron Treads now. So yeah, you always fight against the Quaking Titan here. We already know the typing. We faced one before. Iron Treads is dual type Ground and Steel. Which makes it nice for us because we are using Palmot here. Palmot is a fighting type. So electricity has no effect there because ground are immune. Ground itself is super effective though against it, but we do are using a fighting type. Let's go with arm thrust. Once. Okay, twice. Critical hit as well. A third hit. Fourth hit. Can we hit five? No, it's a four hit. Pretty good. Iron Head, not very effective because it's a steel type move. Fire Fang from Ambosif, super effective because steel are weak to fire. And down goes Iron Treads. Good XP as well, actually. Almost like Chancy level XP. See that? Victory is ours! Maybe the one we saw when we were researching out the Herb and Mystica came from down here. You two got more to meet one of those Pokemon before our crater get together? Chalice! Um, if you got things for the little future roaming around Paldea, that's a major problem. Isn't Professor Turo going to do anything to keep them under control? How could he let this happen? Yeah, right. Cause not like the oh so brilliant Professor Turo ever messed up. Come on, Zitano. Let's get into our research station. Yeah, that's kind of curious, because if Iron Treads did come from here, does that mean there are other future Pokemon roaming in Paldea? Or was that the only one? I guess we have to find some more information. Let's go inside the station and get some more info. And made it to the station number three! How are we doing after all the walking and battling and whatnot? Anyone needs a rest? Hmm... You feeling rough, Penny? N no, it's not that. I've just been thinking ever since the professor mentioned that time machine. The Pokemon in Area Zero came to our time from the future, right? So what about Miraidon? Isn't it pretty likely that it's also one of those future Pokemon? Mm. Well, you're right. Huh? I think you onto something. It's kind of giving off the future vibes, even the name sounds futury. And for those of you wondering if it sounds futury, it is. Mirai in Miraidon is Japanese for future. Same as Korai in Koraidon in Scarlet is for past or ancient. So, 
Yes, Miraidon is indeed meaning future mon. Wait a sec, I totally forgot. Hey Arvin, you had Miraidon's ball. You told us about his forms in the first place. You must know something about it, right? Ugh. You still remember that from way back? No wonder everybody's a little star pupil. Guess I got no choice then but to tell you what I know. That Pokemon, Miraidon, that is, it was found by my dad when he was working on this time machine. I believe it would be best for me to take over the explanations at this point. Professor! Miraidon, which I entrusted to Sitano, was the first Pokemon that was successfully retrieved from the future by the time machine. Seriously? Through analysis of its genetic makeup as well as its behavioral patterns, I came to realize that what I had discovered was in fact a futuristic form of Cyclosar, the Pokemon commonly written in this region. Well, that makes sense, I guess. They do look alike. Many other Pokemon also came to this place from across the boundaries of time. But I was never able to bring over more than two specimens of Miraidon. Huh? You mean, there's another one around here somewhere? What if they're family? The other one could still be somewhere in Area Zero waiting to finally be reunited with our Miraidon. A heartwarming family reunion? Exactly! Imagine how thrilled they will be if they can get the family back together after all this time! Family, huh? Yeah, that sounds nice. If we could proceed, Sitano, please disable the next lock using the central panel there. So there are more than one Miraidon somewhere. Huh. Interesting. Well, let's press this one. So now we're down to three. We need one more. Well done. Only one remains now. Please continue on to the final research station. Hmm, I wonder what Turo has in store. Our time machine research has yielded a triumph. A Pokemon from the distant future. I named it Miraidon. I was expecting one new life treasure, but what fortune to be blessed with this gift as well. Well, I guess. So we know at least three future Pokemon now. So we know that Iron Treads, Iron Bundle, and Miraidon are all from the future. But certainly there must be more. Probably like a lot more. But what do we know? I successfully brought more and more future Pokemon to our time since the first one. I am so close to creating a world like the one in the book. A paradise where the three can live... Um, where three three can live happily together forever. I must make it real. Well, while it must be a good dream, thing is, does he even know the consequence of this? That to me kind of makes this one a bit frightening. Now we've gotten three stations, we can go here and go to area to Zero Gate to Station 1 or 2 if you want to go back. So don't need to worry about being stuck here. Well, let's continue. Now we go inside now, we're now going to go into a more cavern area. We want one of those wild espions here as well. Now we're going to Cavern Park, and now we're going to see a lot more Pokemon, and also some surprising ones. Let's go. The Giraffe here as well. And the Venomoths here. And we've got the Dun Sparse. Yeah, not Dun Sparse, but the Dun Sparse, because it has another, another layer. We have uh, Dug Trio and is that Hydreigon? No, that's n that doesn't look like a Hydreigon. Looks a bit weird. That's not a Hydreigon, is it? A 
Let's find out. There's a robot Pokemon. It's Iron Jugulus. Oh boy. It looks kind of weird. That's indeed a future Pokemon, Iron Jugulus. So what? So they are going to try putting Dark and Dragon. Let's try again then. Arm thrust. Okay, so it's not weak to fighting. Well, it hits though. Wow. Five hits. Nice. Hyper voice. Can we capture one? We can try at least. One? No. Crunch, that's a dark move. Not very effective because uh, po fighting types are resistant to dark. Let's try it again. One, two, three. <gasps> we got it! Our first future Pokemon. But what is it? What typing? Let's check it out. Iron Jugulus. So, here we know the classifications of these Pokemon is called Paradox. Pokemon from the past in Scarlet and Future in Violet are called Paradox Pokemon. So you know which one there is. So this one's called Iron Jugulus. It's a dark and flying dual type, so it's no longer a dragon type. It now replaced dragon with flying. Which is interesting. Anyway, Pokedex data. It's possible that Iron Jugulus, an object described in an old book, may actually be this Pokemon. Well, that was kind of a, a bland dis uh, Pokedex information. Oh well. Let's see the summary though of Iron Jugulus. So, level 57. Terra type is flying. Snarl, Crunch, Hyper Voice, and Air Slash. It is plus special defense minus special attack. Quark Drive. Boost the Pokemon's more proficient style electric terrain or with Pokemon holding boost or energy. What is boost or energy? Careful by nature. Hmm. Well, at least we got our first future Pokemon at least. Iron Jigglis. Can have a reward now. Well, let's get it then. Pokedex data here. I think you need to go to. Is it. Uh, what was it we did it again? Was it here? You go to X. Here we go. ED volumes. We got Waterstone. That's nice. Oh, speaking of uh, Iron Pokemon here, we have another one Iron Bundle. Two of them. Look at the way it moves, almost like it's uh, sk like a skating, almost. So you've got Iron Bundle, this is the dual type water and ice. You see also they have no gender, because again they're robots, so... Look at the head, when it hits. It springs out like it's broken. It's kind of crazy. Ice Steam, oh boy. Ouch! Critical hit as well. Yeah, Iron Bundle is actually a very strong Pokemon. I think it's actually in the Uber tier in uh, competitive play. That's how good it is. It's a very strong Pokemon. Okay, so I can't use Garganical or Bramble Gas. They're weak to Ice. Same with Cloud Sire. Skill is pretty good, I guess, because it's a Fire type. Fire is weak, uh, strong. It's weak to Water, though. I guess Azumarill is probably the best one to use them. Azumarill is a Water type. Water is resistant to both Water and Ice. Try to get his HP a bit lower. Oh no, freeze dry! Ouch, ouch, ouch. So freeze dry is an ice move that is super effective against water moves. Against water Pokemon, even. Let's capture this one. This one seems very powerful. One, two... Ah, oh, I didn't get it. Ice Beam. 
not very effective. Yeah, so Freeze Dry is a great move against Water Pokemon because they're super effective against them as well. One, two, three. Got him! Another one for our likings Iron Bundle. Take the Pokedex data for Iron Bundle. So another Pyrodox Pokemon, as you can see. It resembles a mysterious object mentioned in the old book. There are only two reported sightings of this Pokemon. Why does this weird, bland Pokedex entries? It's kind of... I was expecting more. But again, I guess they are sort of like weird Pokemon, so I guess that maybe those who wrote the Pokedex are like, um, we don't know much about them either because they just, just appeared. Very well. Let's revive on to Palmot, and then let's heal them up. There we go. So that was interesting. There's not Iron Jigglist there as well. If you want to capture one. We got the uh, Glamora as well. A spot grass here, Garganical. Here we got Dunsparce. You can see Dunsparce it was, uh, doesn't have any extra body parts. So it's just a Dunsparce. Is this a. Uh, is the end part? Oh, I have to go here around it. Take a waterfall to the cavern area. Look at this place. A lot of crystals. A lot of crystals. Oh my gosh. Look at all these huge, gorgeous crystals. They go all the way to the bottom. It's almost like a screenshot worthy, this one. One slip and kiss our short lives goodbye. Well, that was a bit slow. Oh, good call. Watch your step. So the professor's down there somewhere, waiting for us. And that's fine. Totally fine. All right, team. Watch yourselves. Let's get to the bottom of this thing. This place looks unreal. Maybe there really is treasure down here, like the stories say. Yeah. This place like something from a whole other world. Makes you feel like maybe you already died and went somewhere. Is it just me or... Do the crystals here give off the same glow as when Pokemon terrestrialize? There's gotta be some sort of connection. Only one way to find out. Come on everybody. Let's keep moving. We got to go all the way down. Oh, we are indeed. But not today. Our time is short. Next episode, we're going to explore the depths down here to the bottom of Area Zero. We have to find out what this all means. Will there be even more of these Paradox Pokemon? And what could it be? And what will Turo say? He must know something. There is something weird going on here. And I want him to tell us, because... This is not going to have a happy ending, I'm afraid. We'll see. Like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on social media. That's good for now. See you guys next time with my journey in Pokemon Violet. Continues.